Hey, what's up, guys? SK here, and today we're going to talk about some tips and tricks I picked up while playing Blessing Wars. Now, even if you started with a head start or if you're going to be a free to play player starting on March 12th, I believe this video is going to be very helpful for you. Um, so, originally, I did plan on streaming Bless Unleashed, but that went ahead and fell through because I realized that streaming is more for entertainment of the audience, whereas what I'm trying to do is, you know, be informative. And I don't really want to watch someone that's going to be informing them versus, you know, trying to entertain them. And so I decided to drop the streaming thing. <laughs> to be honest, it's not for me because I like to be comfortable and streaming kind of makes me uncomfortable as well. I want to get this video out sooner rather than later because I thought it would help people understand the game a bit more before they get deep into it. And personally, I felt like if I kept going, I'd have just forgot everything that they had to do with the beginners and kind of just made videos about what's happening later on in the game. So I think it's good that I get this video out now. Number one is going to be Soul Pyres and Teleport Posts. Alright, so when you first pop into the game, you're going to end up right here in this little farm area. And right down the hill, the first thing you're going to see is this campfire. It's kind of not going to be lit for you guys. When you run to it, it's going to light up. It's, this is called a soul pyre. At a soul pyre, you can sit down, you can um, shit and eat your food or share food with other players. You can cook or you can salvage your equipment, which means breaking down your equipment to get um, armor pieces. Now, the very next thing from the soul pyre is right down the mountain as well. So these things look like lampposts, but they're actually teleport um, posts. And they exist all over the world, so you can fast travel from one spot in the world to the next, as long as you've discovered a teleport post for that section of the world you want to be in. So usually there are soul pyres right next to teleport, um, right next to teleport posts. Sometimes there aren't, but usually they're within like 15 meters of the teleport post in some spaces. So to use teleport post, you're gonna press X, and it's gonna take you into the map once you press use. And you can teleport to any um, teleport post you've already activated, like I said. It's gonna cost gold, but if you have valor perks and um, or prestige rank, it does reduce the price of the teleport post. The valor perks reduces about 25% flat. The prestige rank reduces it depending on what level your prestige rank is. Now, if you are not at a teleport post for and for whatever reason you need to teleport to a spot, you can teleport to a teleport post using star seeds. This costs a bit more than your gold than it would for gold, and um, because star seeds are such an important you know resource in the game, you might not want to do this. But it does get reduced because of your valor perks and your prestige rank as well. Number two is going to be discover Spirios. So it's your very first teleport post. You're going to reach a fork in the road, and going right is going to take you down the path you're supposed to go. Going left, however, is going to take you down a path that you're not going to go later until later on in the game, and that's going to be towards a city known as Spirios. Now, discovering Spirios is very important. Well, not very important, but it's important if you want to do a few things early on in the game. And by discovering Spirios, I mean activating the teleport post there so you can get there whenever you want to. And that's, like I said, that's going to be important later on, like around level 17. I'll go over that a little bit later. But to get to Spirius, you just need to run along the road, follow the road all the way through, and you should be able to get there with no problems. Uh, there are some level 24 mobs in this area. As long as you just don't run into them, you should be fine and don't stop in front of them. You can pretty much outrun the mobs with basic foot speed. If you need to sprint because you feel, you know, extra scared of them, then sprint. But you should just be able to run past them naturally and be fine. Number three is going to be open all chests. So as you explore the game, you're going to find um, treasure chests that are just sitting around in random spots. They don't have any real meaning in the spots that they're in, to be honest. But the random spots that they're in could be like someplace up high or someplace down low. Sometimes they're behind monsters, sometimes they're in places completely safe from monsters. Some are in cities and some are just like in random barren areas for no reason. Um, the reason I said discover Sparrows is because there are a lot of tre treasure chests in Sparrows. Enough to get you at least, I think, five bag spaces right off the bat. So, and they don't show up on your actual big map, but they do show up on the mini map. As soon as you get close to them, they do pop up and you'll be able to run straight to them. I don't have any in the area at all right now um, for any of the areas I'm in. So I'd have to go deeper into the game to be able to access any more of those um of those treasure chests and get my inventory to any higher height than 79. I'm at 79 right now. But yeah, always open up every one of those chests you find. If you see one that you can't get at a moment because the monsters are around it or whatever, you can always lure the monsters off and then run back as the monsters are running back. 
and then go open the chest and then run out of there real quick. Like I said, you, your basic speed will be able to um, to outrun monsters, but if you're on your mount, you can actually outrun the monsters, make them reset themselves, and then speed back on your mount to the chest before they fully reset. And then you can hop off your mount, open the chest, hop back on your mount, take off out of there. So that's just another little tip and trick in between the tip and trick. Number four is make your lunches and eat them. All right, so when you're at your soul pyre, you can go into cook and you can actually cook yourself some lunches. Um, these go into the lunch box and you can use these when you're out of combat to recover HP over time. Uh, they range from 100 HP to like, I think the biggest, the biggest one I've seen was like 700 HP. I saw it somewhere. But then they have other meals you can also cook as well that give you buffs for 60 minutes like, um, this one here increases your gathering and mining speed for by 5% for 60 minutes. And up to 20 players can partake in the dish. Um, and there are higher levels of every one of these meals as well that work for longer or have better buffs and stuff like that. But you need recipes to access most of that stuff. So just keep in mind that you can actually craft your lunches because lunches do play a big part in keeping your health up when you are um, out in the field and trying to grind on mobs for quests. Because you're not going to want to use your potions for grinding on mobs for quests. Because these potions are a very valuable resource in this game. Potions take up a lot of gold. They are a gold sink if you're trying to buy the level 2 potions from the, um, from the merchant. And the level 1 potions just don't do enough unless you have a weapon or a piece of armor that increases the amount of potion um, percent that heals. So that brings us to number 5. Gather herbs when you aren't killing. So if you're just sitting around in game or if you're in the middle of fighting between mobs and stuff, just go ahead and go gather some herbs. Um, they're worth it for you regardless of what you think. Um, they Gathering herbs, you're going to need to craft potions later on. Potions are a very big part of this game because there is no designated heal for um, priests. They just drop these little balls all over the place and you're expected to run into them if you can. Um, so uh, that's going to be your pretty much your your GTFO heal whenever you need it to you know save yourself because your priest has used all their heals or you're not near your priest or your priest is being juggled by the boss and as you can see me gathering this um, herb right here it actually heals about 20% of my HP so and it does provide me a little bit of XP but the, the XP is negligible but the fact is the gathering of herbs does do a lot for you later on in the game like I said, it's going to be useful for you when you're crafting potions, when you're making food, and stuff like that. And that brings us to number six, craft potions. So once you've gathered your herbs, you're going to go to the alchemy station, and you're going to hit the stilling, and you're going to want to go and craft potion of recovery one. Now, potion of recovery one, it gives you, at the, you see at the bottom left, it gives you 10 EXP per craft, and it's going to take three Lumios root. At Potion Recovery 2, you're going to use, you're going to get 15 EXP, but you're going to use 7 Lumios Root, which is double 0.5 of the actual regular recipe. So, the plus 1 does make a difference. You're going to want to use, um, you're going to want to get these because these are more, you can get more out of these than you can get Potion of Recovery 2. And if you have an item that, say, increases the amount of recovery you get for using potions, then that's going to pretty much catch that up to a level 2 while only using what it takes to get a level 1. These potions personally aren't worth it to me, but if you feel like it's worth it, go ahead and craft it. Um, you're going to want to craft, all, you're going to just want to max craft these all the way until um, alchemy level 6. At level 6, you'll be able to craft the healing potion level 1. And that restores 45% of your max HP. Now, with an item that, say, increases how much your healing item does, you can actually boost that even higher. So, that's why you're going to want to rush your, um, you want to craft your potions and get to crafting level 6. I mean, alchemy level 6 to be able to craft these. And the Breath of Mushrooms are going to be easily farmable. That's why I said in the beginning, discover Sparios. Because in this area, I was just in an area in an earlier part of the video, in this area right here, this is all Breath of Mushroom spawn zones. This whole area right here. They don't come in like very big numbers, but it's like, I think 11 or 12 of them that spawn back to back. And even if they don't spawn that fast, you can just switch channels and go around and collect them over and over and over. And then switch channels, go to the next bunch, and just do it over and over until you get how much ever you want. 
I do recommend that you have on a um a gathering booster for this because you get double the um double the materials at fifty percent of the chance. And then I also have on the union skill, which I'm not sure it's actually doing anything to be honest, for getting um an extra item at a five percent chance or getting two extra items at a one percent chance. I mean it's a very small chance that it would happen, but you know. I also have on the um it used to be gained from gathering by twenty percent increase, which isn't that big of a deal, but you know, it might just be that little bit of EXP I need later on. Yeah, that's pretty much it for crafting potions. Um also when you craft these potions you're not gonna want to use them in the field. Potions are a very important resource and using them in the field is just ridiculous when you can just pick up an herb and heal yourself. So you're going to save your potions for dungeons, you're going to save your potions for arena, you're going to save your potions for PvP if you po if you use potions in PvP. You're going to save your potions for everything else, but just don't use them in the field. It's a waste of materials, it's a waste of time, and you're just going to realize that later on in the game. Do your arena challenges, layers, and dungeons. So when I say do your arena challenges, you probably think I mean PvP, and you couldn't be any more further from correct. Go into your matchmaking and go into dungeons and you're going to see these first few on um, things under arena challenges. These are what you're going to want to do at your whatever level you're at to get gear. Now, when you're enhancing, you're going to realize that you're going to break your gear a lot. And repair tools cost a butt ton of star seeds. So to pretty much repair your gear, you're going to want to come to arena challenges and do these over and over and over until you get your armor that you need to repair it it only takes one piece of armor to repair uh, um a broken piece of armor so and it doesn't matter what the rarity is of the item you're using to repair it you can use a green to repair a purple and it will be fine so keep that in mind um when it comes to repairing and when it comes to running your arena challenges and enhancing your gear but the arena challenges, um, they pretty much give you what gear you need for your level range. So when you're doing, say, the Null tri Trium, I don't even know how to say that. When you're doing this, <laughs> you're um, you're going to get C rank gear. But when you go up to Corrupted Creation, you're going to get B rank gear. And sometimes you're going to get C rank gear. When you do Cursed Knight, you're going to get B rank gear, though. So you're just going to want to go ahead and focus on doing these when you're not doing anything else. Like if you run out of quests and you're waiting for regionals to spawn, which is going to be something we'll go over later. Um, and you're just not doing anything besides trying to get your gear better. You're going to go ahead and run these. This is also where you're going to get, you can also get plus four um, enhanced gear that can't be enhanced as well. That can raise your gear score as well to help you farm these a lot better. So it's just more reason to go ahead and do these. So while recording this video, I actually was able to run a layer, and a layer is just um, a boss in a zone that looks like it's home, and you fight the boss in a bigger area than you would in the regular arena challenge, and it's five people versus um, that one boss, and the boss is just a bit harder than um, it normally would be if you've seen the boss originally. Like the Wolf King, I'm guessing, is going to be a bit harder, a lot harder than what the Wolf King was in the beginning. Um, so. And then the dungeon is your standard dungeon, like you run in every other game where you run through, kill mobs, kill a mini boss, kill more mobs, kill another mini boss, and then finally run the um, the dungeon boss and get your loot. Now the layer and the um, the dungeon require you to use seal keys to open the boxes for them, and they also give gear equivalent to whatever level you're running against. So number eight is do your regional quests, and this includes hourly and fill bosses. So if you open up your map and you zoom out to where you just see your um, teleport posts and your soul pyres, you also see other icons like this on the map, which are going to be your regional quests or your fill bosses um, regional quests. And these quests are able to be done. Sometimes they're, they're able to be done every three hours. Some are able to be done every 24 hours. Some take time and just don't want to respawn sometimes. I mean, I don't, we haven't figured, I haven't figured out the exact science to these, to be honest. But, um, what we know for a fact is that bosses do reset 24 hours after being killed. So, um, that's one thing that is constant at least. Unless it's, I think it's the weekly reset where they all just reset at once, I believe. I, that, that happened on Thursday. I'm not sure what happened there. We're trying to still get that down. 
Um, then again, there was server maintenance that day as well, so that might have reset it by itself every server. So it might be every server maintenance as well. So watch out for that. I'm not completely sure on that, like I said. Now, doing these will always get you a reward, a quest reward, and a bunch of EXP, and some skill EXP, and um, armor fragments. And the reward may differ. You can get armor pieces, you can get um, enhancement stones, you can get just things just in that nature. The ones that you're going to do in your high level, like around your... When you get to like 19 plus, you're going to really want to focus on getting the ones for armor pieces because you're going to want to be able to get your armor cores from them. This is how you're going to also armor core farm besides doing your daily challenges, besides doing your challenges back to back. And some of these you'll be able to get your, um, your piece of armor again so you can repair your armor as well. Now aside from your regular regional quests, the, there are regional field boss quests like I said. And those come in two different categories. They come in the elite field bosses and the unique field bosses. The, the elite ones spawn every 24 hours after they're killed, and the unique ones spawn every week. So like the harpy, um, this giant right here, see it says 100 and something hours, that's going to be 7 days from now, I'm pretty sure. And I'm not going to be able to do that quest once I do it again. But this gives, um, the reason you would do these is because even if you're not at the level of doing it, it still gives you these items called soul crystals which you can trade into an NPC called the monster hunter. Um, it's the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7th item up from the bottom. When you're looking at my um, my left side of the screen, they gave out these soul crystals. You can trade them for Monster Hunter for other items, and that's pretty much the only use I've seen for them so far. I'm not sure if there's more use for them later on in the game, but as of now, that's the use I've seen for them. Number nine is armor effects. So this whole time we've been talking about armor and how to farm it and how to get extra pieces of armor, and you're probably wondering why do I want to get extra pieces of armor besides repairing it. Well, first of all, there are armor effects on every piece of armor, and the armor effects, the, um, the equipment effect is not always the same, because they all hold different values. So, as you see this on um, both attack boots I have here, it says equipment effect increases attack power by 217. That's not the max attack power that these boots could get, but these boots specifically are only going to be 217. I can't reroll that stat. Now, if I find another bonus attack boots, their value might be higher or they might be lower from the um, equipment effect. So that's why you're going to be wanting to do your arena challenges to get more armor so you can roll and try to get better armor effects on your armor before you enhance and go forward with that piece of armor. This is going to be a lot of farming, trust me. Uh, the same thing goes for these, these boots right here. These I have to enhance first of all to even get to be better than the bonus attack boots with gear score and the defense is already better but the gear score is not even close but the equipment effect is increases critical hit, hit rate by 3.9 percent for b rank that's pretty low i believe the the top um the top of the chart for critical rate in b rank is 5.81 percent so these are pretty low i wouldn't want to keep these anyway um unless you know i just wanted to smash them just to get to a higher rank just so i can have my gear score up in this part of the game and this early in the game of course you're not going to pay attention to you know your effects because you're not trying to min-max right now, but later on in the end game, you're going to definitely want to pay attention because you're going to be crafting most of your own gear for most of the end game, and these unique effects are going to matter, especially if you're going to like try to max out all your stats when it comes to your character and have your character be the best it can be. So number ten is going to be union quests. So correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but at around level seventeen, you'll be in this area, and this is where you first meet your union person, your first union person at that. And it's gonna be for the artisan, um, for the artisan union. Yeah, the artisan society union. And that's gonna give you your first quest. And it's gonna take you somewhere over here. But when you speak to that person, I believe that unlocks your union quest, period. Because when they take you to the quest that brings you all the way over here, um, I was, I was under gear to even do this quest. But I did go ahead and find my first union board down here and it gave me quests now union quests they give you a ton of exp depending on what you have to do because they might take you anywhere on the map and i mean anywhere on the map but even at lower levels you can complete some of the hardest union some of the higher level union quests because some of them are just gather quests 
And I had a guy the quest the other day give me almost 300,000 EXP for just picking flowers in the area where there were monsters. And I didn't die one time against those monsters. I just kind of snuck around and played ninja to go around and grab the items I needed to until, um, until I was able to finish the quest and move on. So doing union quests are a really good way to level up. They help you get through the um the adult the kind of no phase between 17 and 19 that people are running into i didn't run into that phase i kind of just blew through that phase because of these union quests to be honest because i think i was able to do um four they usually give you six for some reason they reset at five but they usually give you six um i did i think four out of five the first day and three of them gave over a hundred thousand um a hundred thousand esp and one of them gave like I said, close to 300,000 EXP. So that was able to push me all the way through the level on top of the the regional quests I was doing and on top of the um, the boss regionals I had to do as well. And I think I pushed through two levels that day because of those. So that's a good reason to go ahead and do your union quest. Now a lot of people know that you can do these early by finding Sperios, which is why I said in the beginning, find Sperios. Unlock Sparios because you're gonna go here as soon as you hit level 17 and get your first union quest. If you can't, if you're in a guild with someone that's high level and you get a kill quest for a high level area, ask them if they can take you along with them to do the union quest. Tell them, hey, I need this many kills of this monster, and they can get the kills for you if you're in the party, I believe, and you'll be able to get the credit for the quest. If it's a gather quest, you can go there yourself and just pick up whatever pieces you need, and it'll be done. And <laughs> that's pretty much it. I never noticed there was a hand over here. That's wild. Number 11 is going to be campaign rewards. To access your campaign rewards, you're going to go into press to start and you're going to go into your um, bottom left. And you're going to go into Shadows of the Unseen, which is your only campaign you should have unlocked. The other two require you to have Star Seeds and be at a certain level to unlock them. Um, when you go into Shadows of the Unseen, under these, you're going to see these, pretty much these, um, these, these achievements you have to get. And to get these achievements done, you're going to have to do either quests or do achievements of their own as well as subquests, dungeons, and other things just to finish getting that um, already set. That lets you get the reward for the campaign. Now unlocking all of the rewards in the campaign allows you to get the final reward which gives you whatever that item is. This one's going to be the Holy Alliance um, Knight's costume and I wish I could actually, there we go, pull it up. Um, and that's pretty much what it looks like. Each campaign gives their own little reward. That one looks like that. And then this one's going to be part of your Centurion's Command um, memory fragment for your final blessing. So number 10 is going to be your blessings. So if you look at your map, there are all sorts of Fistera all over the place. Um, they're not just limited to one spot in the game. And you can constantly change your blessings if you want to. You can change your blessings to suit your needs when it comes to you grinding or just farming bosses. Or just running challenges because some blessings just don't work in every plot in every spot in early game now later game you're gonna want to stick to a certain blessing because you know it's just gonna be better with the moves that it has and the skill points you've invested into it but like I said early game you're gonna want to change your blessings a lot I've done I've changed my blessing a few times I'm sticking to one blessing right now because a piece of armor I has makes the blessing really good so that's um that's just something that you need to know about when it comes to blessings and finally reach number 13 crusades and invasions so crusades and invasions um they spawn kind of randomly to be honest i'm not really sure if there's like a time period of where they spawn i know some of them mostly spawn at night so i guess try to be on at night i'm not really sure like I said, it's, it's kind of just really random when these spawn but when they do spawn you might want to keep an eye on your map or um pay attention to your notifications it will show up that the that they've activated especially if you're in the area and try to get to them as fast as you can because they can end quickly especially the crusades one of the famous crusades and you can see the icon for the crusade on the um, actual thing right here but when it shows up on the map it's going to be a giant white oval and one of the most infamous ones is this in this area right here where you have to kill kill 20 herbivores and 20 um carnivores in this lake area and in this area there's hippos lions hyenas just things like that and um it goes up really quickly like i said it's if you're in this area and you're you just happen to be grinding and it pops up just get a kill or two contribute and 
trust me, you're going to get a ton of EXP and a quest drop. Um, the invasions, however, they spawn pretty much anywhere. I've seen one spawn here. I've seen one spawn somewhere down here. I've seen one spawn um, in the rift area, dimensional rift area. I've seen one spawn like at the very top of the map up here. And they they can be high level, they can be around level 28. Um, it just It's just a lot of inconsistency with the rifts. So I'm not really sure on that right now, but I will try to keep track of that and probably do a video later on the time frames and how to get into them. But they're all about participation. If you, even if you get a hit on the mob that dies, you can consider yourself participating in it. And at the end of them, it spawns a treasure chest in which there's a purple light that leads you directly to the treasure chest. It's like a, it's like a um, light that you see when you set a waypoint on your map. Instead of being green, it's going to be purple. And it takes you to the treasure chest. You open the treasure chest and you get a box for participating um, for whatever level your participation is at. And you get the XP and a little bit of gold and a little bit of the, um, the soul shards. So that's pretty much it when it comes to the crusades and they're just really quick to do fun to jump into um they some of them are like high level so you can be in a low level area like one pops up over here um in the lower level super low level area and they pop up with like level 28 mobs and <laughs> people that are over there usually get like swamped over and high level shadow rush over there and do that quest and run it out of time so they can get the rewards but yeah that's pretty much it for this video guys thank you guys for watching um, I'm just trying to help out the community of Bless when it comes to, you know, understanding things in the game and getting ready for playing the game when it comes out free to play on March 12th. So hopefully this video is helpful when it comes to that. But that's pretty much it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. Like I said, I'm trying to be informed when it comes to Bless and at least help people figure out things because it's not going to be, you know, an easy thing for people to find out things about this game. It's brand new. The information is not there yet. Um, there are people working on guides, written guides that I've seen on um, post in the Discord. So join the official Discord for Bus Unleashed as well. And um, that's pretty much it. Thanks, guys, for watching. And uh, this is my Berserker dance. Peace.